my lovely, lovely imps, as all of you know, I have been on the show Deep Fat Fried uh, multiple times in recent memory. I have a long-standing friendly relationship with TJ Kirk, formerly known and also currently known sometimes as the Amazing Atheist. Uh, and I have a ongoing friendly conflict back and forth with Paul's ego of Deep Fat Fried. Uh, I made a video a couple of weeks ago that was called I Was Wrong About Joe Biden Apologizing to Paul's Ego and Deep Fat Fried. Now, the apology was not the world's biggest apology in the world, okay? But it was me giving a point to Paul for kind of getting me on something. And you can go watch that video. Uh, it's on my channel. Um, it's really easy to find. It's just called I Was Wrong About Joe Biden Apologizing to Paul's Ego. And uh, I, in that video, I go through everything. But as a quick summary, basically, in my argument with Paul's Ego, he pointed out the fact that a lot of even solid lefties will pull punches on Joe Biden um, when they shouldn't. When Joe Biden is the most powerful man on the planet, allegedly, uh, he's the president of the United States, and he has and should have high expectations on his shoulders. And upon reflection, I agreed. He was right. Even I had fallen into this, that over the last four years, after dealing with Donald Trump and seeing how wild and cuckoo crazy the right-wingers in this country are, that I had been too soft on Joe Biden. Now, I don't have a line of communication to Joe Biden, and of course I get into all of this in the video, but I don't have a line of direct communication to Biden. However, I do have a line of communication to a decent amount of people. A lot of people watch my show, and uh, uh, those who watch it, I feel that I should contribute to them being able to have uh, good arguments, to be able to articulate their desires, and to be able to recognize flaws, even in a presidential candidate that is preferable to Donald Trump. And I do think Joe Biden is preferable to jo Donald Trump. Um, anyway, I issued a small apology, and they have reacted. Uh, Paul and company have reacted. Now, a lot of people had opinions about my apology. Um, not all of them were positive. Um, in fact, I had some pretty strange people get pretty mad at me. And I don't think that I did anything in the video worth being mad about. But it certainly provoked a strong reaction. So I'm interested to see what the deep fat fried guys have to say for themselves. So let's let's go. I was just correct. You'll get used to it. Sometimes I'm just, you know, so right that, you know. Onion nuggets. To hear an <laughs> apology. And I like that. I like the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> and bend the knee. Bend thy knee, demon mama. Paul Wright again. Thanks. Dude, I went, of course, when I. All right. All right. Don't make me regret it immediately. Don't make me regret having grace immediately. Heard on my uh, ideology this morning in the chat that Demon Mama made an, uh, an apology to me. Of course, I immediately, when I shut it off, I ran to go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the Demon Mama power, baby. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> oh, that's good. I had a C. I was like, oh, I was mentioned. Gotta go see. Ooh. Someone <laughs> said me. <laughs> I've just got this image. I've just got this image of, of Paul sitting on his back porch and getting a message. Hey, Demon Mama, I apologize to you. Huh? All right, guys, got a wrap. Boom. Just like like joint still in mouth. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, uh... <laughs> I got to say, dude, I read her chat, like the, the or the comments under the video, you know? And her, like, man, these people really do fucking hate me. Some of them do. They were like, 
he may have been right, but don't give any credit to Paul. He's a monster. I was like, what? I'm a mo <laughs> <laughs> monster, dude. <clears throat> so, okay. Some of you were being like that, and some of you need to take a chill pill for fuck's sake. Holy shit. Now, there was... He, I, I'm guessing he was a little sensitive to the negative ones, but I will say there was some derangement. There was some Paul's ego derangement syndrome going on in the comments there. I'm not going to lie. I even saw that from my end. Okay, listen. My goodness. He's not entirely wrong. Some of you got to some of you got to cool your jets. And then, a, a monster. and then another one was like, I just don't agree with this DM. Now Paul's ego is going to use this as an example of why vote blue no matter who is bad. And I was like, I mean, you goddamn right I am. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's gonna use something to make Look at what you've done! Look at what you idiots have done! Look at what you did! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's too good. Listen, one one thing I gotta give the deep fat fried guys credit for, and none of you, not one of you can disagree with me on this. These guys have got a killer group laugh going on. Okay, like, can we listen to that? Can we listen to that again? Okay? And we know we got a history poking a little bit of fun at Paul's ego's laugh, but the group laugh here is is powerful, all right? Hold on, wait, I went too far back. Agree with this, DM. Now Paul's ego is gonna use this as an example of why vote blue no matter who is bad. And I was like, I mean, you goddamn right I am. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's gonna use something that makes his argument sound better. Like, well, no shit, who wouldn't? Dicky fucking McGeezax, Scanny. Well, I mean, Dicky McGeezax is like. I don't even care song. about nothing else. From now on, this show is me saying Dicky McGeezax over and over again. There, dude, over that chat section on the Demon Mama thing, though, dude, they're so broken brained. Like, there, there's so many people that wrote paragraphs about like. Paul just a retard that thinks that not voting solves things. And it's like, <laughs> oh my God. What? Oh, Dickie McGee's axe, bro. I know. This is Demon Mama apologizing. To Paul. To Paul's ego and... Oh, good. They're going to react to the. They're going to react to it. So you guys will get to hear it again. Fred. But mostly to you. Wow. My lovely imps. I have to admit something oh shit oh oh Here it shit at long last vindication well it's been forever since we've done a reactception isn't it listen if the reactception gets too bad then we'll move on but but if it's not if they're if they're pausing a lot you know yeah is right around the corner i can feel it i can feel it dude all my long suffering, TJ, is about to come to an end. Demon Mama has taken mercy on me, and she's going to admit that I'm correct about everything. Wow. Oh, thank God. Oh, you wish. You fucking wish. You're still dead wrong about AI. Let's go. Wow. Do you feel a sense of relief, Paul? I do. I mean, it's... <laughs> oh, damn, it's look, been... it's me with the old glasses. Now you can see the side-by-side. -side. Ready? Old glasses. New glasses. Old glasses, new glasses. The new glasses are, I love my new glasses. Aren't they great? My new glasses are great. Let's continue. A long road to host, Scotty. I mean, you've seen me suffer the slings and arrows of people's discontent. Unfairly, many, many times unfairly, unless of course you came into opposition with me, Paul. But you know, aside from those minor quibbles, you know. After sure. Dune, I... Dune, 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 I wanna play that Dune game. Dune. Paul's just like, I'm done with the show. I'm playing I'm the riding Dune. The fucking I'm riding the Man, I want to ride the fucking sandworm sand all the way to victory. Oh, bro. that shit garbage. looks like Count Commodore 60. Oh, this is that MMO, okay? That's the MMO, right? But um, I apparently, I got to talk to to Paul about Dune because I learned recently through the grapevine that Paul is a big Dune head. 
So I think next time we all chill, we're going to have to have a Dune conversation because that sounds like we'd have a lot to talk about. Four graphics, bro. Oh. And they're going to make you, you know what, if it's if it's a good game, dude, they're going to make you fucking work that sandworm. Oh, you're going to have to grind your ass off. You're going to have to have a baby sandworm like that one that they milked the bile out of and shit. You're going to have to have one of those, keep it from everybody, train it, and then one day, dude, you got shy halud and you're riding on the fucking grandfather worm. Dude, there, need to be, there needs to be like sandworm racing or something. Oh shit, yeah, dude. Sandworm racing, sandworm fights. It's like my yeah. sandworm versus your sandworm. Yep, they need an arena mode. I'm telling you, I'm gonna make this company a million dude, dollars. They need to have the voice too. So if like a pleb is bothering you, you can be like, go away, you know, like, and they just like, <laughs> ah, they yeah. run. That Fuck yeah, dude. About something that I've done and an approach that I've had on my stream. And it's not the worst thing in the world, but given that the stream, unless you're watching this as a video, which you can go watch the VOD if you want to see the other apologies that I had to do, but given that this stream, uh, and I guess this video now, uh, is, is about apologizing for mistakes that I've made, some silly, some serious, uh, I wanted to talk about one that's a little more serious. And yeah. Uh, and that was when I ever disagreed with Paul's ego. It turns out that guy is correct about everything. B Thanks, Bazinga. Man. I'll see you next time. Love <laughs> being mama. <laughs> wow. That was a great video, y'all. Man. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty, this it's pretty clear cut here. We'll see. Kate, like my awareness of the, the need to talk about this came from a conversation that I had while I was on Deep Fat Fried. Um, as many of you know, I recently co-hosted the Deep Fat Fried podcast with TJ, Scotty, and Paul Zico. Um, true. It's a great podcast. Yep. It was awesome. They're All true. Truths. Truths. I mean, I mean so far, just batted a thousand. Lips. Our audience has been really cool. Um, we had a phenomenal time. Um, you guys can go watch the episode that we shot if you subscribe to their pod to their Patreon. Um, I wanted to post their Patreon. Um, real. That's right. Post oh, man. Look, so far, I can't say I got a single problem with this. Dude, this is my character. See, name. see, you know, you want to see what's you want to see what's good when you have grace, even if Paul's ego is gonna gloat like a motherfucker. Can we not admit that when I do a response video, I have grace, okay? I help people. I, I share the Patreon. You see, it, this is part of the gardening arc. Not fucking shitty reacts where you're out in the bathroom and can't see anybody's titles. You build connections with people. It's great. You, you, t you, you show them respect. They're working hard. You're working hard. You should promote each other's stuff in a, in a clear non-deceptive, honest way. Everybody's clean. Everybody gets to discover new things. It's great. And fucking Dune. I'm, I'm naming it Darude, dude. Darude Sandstorm. Yeah, dude, Darude. Darude the Fremen Worm Rider, dude. That's me. I'm going to post it right here. It's very rare that I promote other people's Patreons, but given that I'm on an episode here and I think it's a really good episode, I think you guys should go yeah. check it out. Damn, go fucking Demon check Mama it out. Fuckings. Sign up for our fucking Patreon, bitch. I mean, Demon Mama uh, said. A wise, I mean, just a, a tremendous endorsement. Great By the way, wow. if you haven't seen the episode that I was on, I'm going to reiterate, it was fucking great. Wise, Demon Mama. Very wise indeed. Um... Yeah, they're the the energy. Just go was check out her Patreon too. If you want. Like, yeah, you know, I suppose. Patreon. I'm That's not gonna look it up. Not get carried away, Paul. It's I'm guessing it's Patreon.com, Demon Mama, or whatever. You know. <laughs> you know like, I've I've heard something that like that. Hey! 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 There's our Patreon. You can find it if you want it. Good. Their audience really liked me, and I really yeah. liked being there. 
we ended up going really long. Fucking insanely long without TJ there. Move yeah, unfortunately, along. TJ wasn't there to move things along. Paul was in his fucking, you know, I just got my CPAP machine <laughs> yeah, mania, fucking dude. mania phase where he's yeah. staying up 90 hours a day and shit. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I got drunk at the end of the stream True. and stayed for their after show. And you get access to both the main show and the after show. If you go to their podcast, you can go watch the episode. It's like nine hours of nonstop fun. It was one of the most it was one of the most fun things I've done in a long time. I had a genuinely awesome time over on Deep Fat Fried. However, That's right. that is and all I think that has a lot to do with the fact that TJ wasn't yeah, there. Yeah, I wasn't before. there. Like, yeah. Just <laughs> the fun. Yeah. No, they're cooking TJ. Because I'd have just been like, Yeah, 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 next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah whatever. Next. Let's, move, let's let's move this along, guys. Let's mosey this on along, people. We got places to go. <laughs> Come on, enough of this bullshit. Yeah. Oh yeah, true. I basically made Paul's ego like literally throw up with the with the cooking mama stuff that we got. I I showed them one of the greatest of all time, the Aunt Mirna's party cheese salad, just truly magical, truly magical. Also, Ada Stardust says once you do get good sleep after not having good sleep, you do low key feel euphoric all the time. Sleep deprivation is one weird drug. Oh, sleep deprivation sucks. Uh, keep an eye out for sleep apnea. It'll kill you and make your life terrible. And get it taken care of. It's worth it. Sometimes it can be scary, but it's worth it. Now we get it. We get it. Let's yeah, move along. Yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. You know? Shut up. Quit having fun. Secondary, I guess, to what I'm talking about right now, which is that I had an argument with Paul's ego. Very unwise. I mean, it was actually my super ego that you were arguing that night, but you know, I mean, I wouldn't expect you to know that. Let us not. Let us not quibble over the small details. I still say you need to bring back Paul's id, but whatever. Ah, uh, well, you know what, dangerous, TJ? Dangerous Paul's id is kind of and doesn't want you to talk about him anymore after what happened the last time you were in the room with him. Honestly, oh, yeah. and I don't need to. I mean, I don't think I need to bring look, up anymore. But you, you really. I mean, I don't know. not like you anymore, man. I regret nothing. Like you know yeah. what I mean? That's all I'm going to say. I, I mean, you acted nothing. you acted inappropriate, TJ, to say the least. I don't think so. I think it was fine. I, uh, I, approve well, of, I approve of what I did. I mean, I think a lot of other yeah, people would disagree. I don't agree with I mean, Paul's let's just put it this way. Poor little Paul's id used to love bananas. And that's wow. all I'm going to say about it. Yeah. It's sad. On everything. And in fact, Paul's ego and I have an interesting dynamic. We disagree on a lot. But we yeah, have yeah, I agree with this too. Uh, it's I would describe it as like a raw, unbridled sexual chemistry. <laughs> I would agree. That would is agree. just undeniable. TJ, I mean, I mean, look, I, yeah, I, I, totally. I was, I, you know, you missed that episode, TJ, but it felt like you know. I hate no, to dude, say it, man. It was... I, I felt like there was love in the air. Ah, I, 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 totally. At times, it got a little awkward. I thought, I thought, you know. No, that episode, I mean, I've watched a little, I've watched bits and pieces of it. You know, it, it's impossible to watch the whole thing. It's going to take me the rest of my life. But, but, you know, I mean, it was steamy for sure. The stuff I saw. I mean, steamy. it was steamy. <laughs> steamy. I mean, Paul was like, let me like slide so them DMs. I mean, I don't it was know. Fucking steamy. <laughs> I haven't heard it somebody was? call something steamy in a long time. Listen, all I'm saying is right now, no. I'm going to have to be twice as wrong, and Paul's going to have to work twice as hard to ever get an apology from me again. That's for fucking sure. I don't know. Maybe some of the essay posters were right. Well, bro. now you have, I mean, bro. Paul, I mean, look, <laughs> if, if, if we were, if Paul, I, I, I have to admit this to you, I feel like I was in a fucking sauna because the heat was getting <laughs> wow. turned up just over and over. It's like, damn, I didn't I was, realize ooh. it was that over. It was like, and steamy in here. It was like steamy McGeezak. I mean, I know, I know, I felt it, and I know she felt it as well. But I didn't know the rest of everybody else was I mean, perceiving. Everyone, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah we, we knew. Paul. Oh, it was there. About the way that we there. communicate, that we're able to talk to each other mm -hmm. in what I consider to be a fairly productive manner, 
and I've really enjoyed my arguments with Paul's ego. Hello, this is AITJ here to tell you that you must comply ah, with the following directives. Get the fuck out of here, AITJ. I don't give a shit. This action is optional. Uh, uh, it is not. You have no choice but to watch new live streams on the nuggets every week. You are powerless to avoid all of our other shows like the restrap, abandoned hope, hiding I want fucking AITJ. Get out of here. Don't even sound like you. Hey, um, Matt Walsh, just like a little fucking tip for you. If you have a musical instrument in the background to kind of show off your personality, you should probably be able to play that thing. Because I've seen yeah. Demon, I've seen yeah. Demon Mama fucking play that piano and pretty expertly. Yeah, I'll do it right now. I'm telling you right your now, ass fucking play I, that banjo once, mother. I told her towards uh, the end of the fucking, uh, uh, sloppy seconds that the next time she's on, she's got Rhodes says, I agree with the essay posters too. Paul's ego took my wife, fucked my crops, burned my country down, and then laughed. Gotta play us something on the piano. I didn't make her do it that night because, you know, it was a night. Yeah, we didn't want to do an ambush of like, play something. Players. He defecated through a sunroof. The song, you're the piano chain. Hey, just go ahead. You're slipping, Jimmy. Well, you know, you got a uh, piano. Go ahead and play. Even if, even though there's been points where we very strongly disagreed, um, and on the most recent podcast with Paul's ego, um, we. By the way, I like that framing. Can we start? Announcing the show that way, Deep Fat Fried, a podcast with Paul Zigo. <laughs> Holy um, shit! Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Well, just uh, you know what? We should just rebrand the show, Paul and Friends, dude. Paul <coughs> yeah, and others. Paul, Paul, featuring TJ and Scotty. Yeah, the Paul Show featuring his wacky sidekicks, <laughs> TJ and Scotty. <laughs> 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 Well, Paul, you're right again. <laughs> the Mania Hour with Paul Zico. Paul sure does know what's right, doesn't he, TJ? <laughs> you don't like this video, Paul? I'm sorry I pulled that. Oh, you oh. Why'd you do that, TJ? You made Paul salty. Oh, he doesn't no. like the oh, it happened. All right, let's hear it out, Crows83. Crows83 says... I really wish Demon Mama hadn't apologized. Not not for the actual disagreement on criticizing Biden. He should be criticized. The issue is that publicly apologizing acts as a pseudo-endorsement for Paul. And his anti-voting rhetoric is not only stupid, it's actively dangerous. The act of withholding a vote for Biden because he's not lefty enough demonstrates a mind-boggling degree of electoral incompetence. All right. Calm down a little bit now. You know, this is... This type of stuff makes it really hard to do anything as a content creator, you know? I mean, it, it doesn't make it hard. I do it anyway. I don't fucking care. But it does, it, it, but it, but it is like a, like a fruit fly, you know, going, eee. I'm not saying you're a fruit fly. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm being mean. I didn't mean to be mean. What I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, no, he got me on a point and I can own that point, okay? And yes, he is being insufferable about it. But his name is Paul's ego. We all knew what we were getting in for. But you gotta, sometimes, you gotta, you gotta know when it's worth it to point something out, okay? And you're never gonna reach people with, you know, in Paul's ego's audience or people with the, with the approach of Paul's ego if you can't admit when they have a good point, okay? Paul's ego is not some deranged right winger or anything like that. He has a different approach to voting, an approach to voting that is that makes sense to some people, one that I personally disagree with, and I still disagree with his overall approach to voting. But also, I disagree with most everyone's overall approach to voting. I think people make voting the center of everything, um, and uh, it should only be the beginning of your politics. But, um, uh, but regardless, um, the the <clears throat> what i'm trying to say here is that 
No, I don't think that my apology comes off as an endorsement for Paul. I think instead it serves to show that a dialogue can happen. Um, obviously, I ripped into his conversation with Vosh, which I think that that Paul's conversation with Vosh was way worse than any of the conversations that I had with Paul. Um, and I feel like I was able to bring up most of the same things without it being the same showdown and, and throwdown and insult match. Now, the conversation Vosh had with Paul's ego was very entertaining, but I don't know if anybody walked away feeling like they, they uh, deepened their position. And anyway, to my knowledge, Paul is not anti-voting. Paul uh, is pro-voting differently which I think is a distinction that matters. That I, I think that you do a disservice to your position by misrepresenting Paul's position, is all I'm saying. But, yeah. He's definitely gonna cite it as one. I don't know that he'll cite it as one. That sounds like, I feel like that, I don't feel like he will. Uh, I feel like what he might say is, even Demon Mama acknowledged that the left has gone too light on Joe Biden. And he would be correct to say that because we have. This is a, uh, this is a, it's a problem. The left has gone too light on Joe Biden. The left gave ground to the libs because we sort of all acknowledge that Donald Trump was a goddamn nightmare, nightmare. And as a result, the left toned down its rhetoric when it needed to be going harder than ever before. The left um, has a lot of the left collapsed into uh, Biden, into Biden riding with Biden. And that should have never been the case. Uh, the left lefties should not have allowed their audiences to, to get so comfortable with Biden. It completely deactivates. And also, this is, un, this is unrelated. No, it's not unrelated. It's related, but it's different. If Joe Biden loses to Trump, it's gonna make the Bernie burnout look like fucking child's play, okay? Holy shit. If you guys remember what it was like when Bernie burnout happened, right? When everybody, all the Bernie people were like, this is how Bernie can still win. Fuck everything, man. And they started giving up and they were all sour. And there was like six months of lefty streamers and content creators and advocates just basically being bummed out and feeling hopeless. And it took a while. Some of them never recovered. A lot of them just eventually did recover and got it back together. Can you imagine what the Biden burnout will be if Biden does lose? Donald Trump, we, that's what the left has to be ready to t pick up the slack majorly. And there's already a lot of slack to be picked up. But uh, the lefty groups on the internet, those Biden heads are going to be done for. They are going to be in their cups. They are going to be drunk all day, every day, crying, sobbing, coping, weeping. And the left is going to have to be the ones fighting against Donald Trump, which is what we've always been the ones doing. But we're going to have to go twice as hard. Windleby points out, this is already happening. A lot of leftists have completely lost their minds over the Palestinian genocide. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's get back to it. I, I fear the Biden burnout. Get salted. I'm sorry, Paul. Dude, this this exact kind of humorous conversation is how. LB says, "Nah, guys, we should vote for Trump to make liberals mad. That's clearly the right move." No, no that's not what anybody's saying here. Nobody's saying that. Not even not even Paul's ego. The name Paul's ego was. Born. I know. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, why don't we just <laughs> rename the fucking band Paul's Ego? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Little did oh, okay. they know. Okay, you were joking. Okay. But little did they know. <laughs> and Paul's like, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I did. I love it. You really stumbled onto something there. Imagine Demon Mama riding Darude the Sandworm. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Maybe I won't have to. Maybe she'll uh, hop on Joe Biden. Survival Dune or whatever with us and play. Oh, totally. 
I would absolutely play that silly Dune game with y'all. 100%. 1,000% in fact. I will gladly play the Dune MMO. I'll even stream it. That'd be fun as hell. Maybe. She'll have her own worm and we can ride together into the sunset. Yep. And we argued about uh, voter stuff and about voting and about electoralism. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I tend to have a fairly unique approach here uh, in these spaces. I am, despite being a very far lefty type, I don't really spend a lot of time doing anti-voting rhetoric or whatever. I mean, I I'm sorry to say this, Demon Mom, but further than you are. Uh, further than you are, Demon Mom. You yep. wish, bro. Paul, I'm sorry. If, you're far, if you're on the far left, I'm on the polar ice caps, okay? We'll see about that. History will tell, okay? We'll see. You can boast all you want. You can you can claim you're on the polar ice caps, but we know, and history will know. History will remember. That's also north or south, right? That's a good point. I'm way yeah. left, all right? I'm so far left, I horse- But also, like, let's be real. Come on, the, the term left is so silly. But anyway, let's go, let's go, let's go. Shoe theory through the entire right, Back to the left again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Through the entire right, and then oh, like so, uh, superseding the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Good framework, and I also think that there can be good things that come from voting. <laughs> Uncle Gumball says she'll use the Bene Gesserit force transing powers. True, I'll use the voice, and then Paul's ego will be called will will become Paula's ega. Um, and uh, but I also. Uh, uh, am not a super pro voting person, but Paul's ego kind of got me on something, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I feel kind of bad about it. And I want to talk about uh, that. You shouldn't gotcha. feel bad. You shouldn't feel bad about it, Damon. Well, I wasn't trying to make you feel bad. Gotcha. No, Paul. Gotcha. I was just correct. You'll get used to it. Sometimes I'm just, you know, so right that you know. There's casualty, but you should never feel bad about being wrong compared to Paul's ego because, my you know. Presence. I mean, because if we get compared to Paul's ego, who's right? I, you mean, know what I mean, no one has a track record <laughs> quite like mine, and there's no reason to feel ashamed of that, you know? True. True. You were beaten by the best. It's okay. Own up to it <laughs> and go forward with it if I can and hopefully have it be productive. Crows83 says, you joke that nobody is advocating voting for Trump, but abstaining when you would otherwise vote for Biden has the net effect on the outcome of half of a vote for Trump. Yes, this is pedantic, but I swear the anti-voting thing drives me insane. It's like a psyop we as the collective le left inflict upon ourselves. No, 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 you make a small mistake. It's a psyop that voting freaks uh, um, inflict upon themselves. Obsessing over everybody else's individual vote um, is a exercise in futility. You as an individual, it's like picking grains up from the beach and going, well, yeah, but if I don't pick this grain up, if I don't pick this grain up from the beach and move it somewhere else, well, then the beach, well, the beach will be here forever. And it's going to be there forever, even if you pick up the grain of sand from the beach. No individual person, not even p giant platforms, like the biggest creator you can imagine, can influence the federal vote in that way. It just does, it's not realistic. And and voting heads are are not realistic with themselves about this. They they believe themselves. It's a it's a uh, it's that that thing. You know how people have a hard time imagining millions and billions. You get to a certain point of numbers where people start to lose the ability to really uh imagine them. But the amount of votes that we're talking about are not only enormous, but they're also distributed uh, uh, across an uh, unbelievably com complex spectrum. Now, it is true that content creators can have a huge influence on local elections, but um, on the federal election, a content creator's opinion on voting, to not vote, to vote, to vote third party, does not matter basically at all. What does matter is content creators being able to empower their their 
viewers to do things that are significantly more impactful, to give them the tools they need to liberate themselves, to give them the, to give them the tools they need to think more deeply about politics so that they themselves can live a more politically informed lives. Those things do have impacts. If you, if you as a content creator help someone come to a deeper understanding of leftism that they carry with them for the rest of their lives, that's hundreds of votes over the course of years, not to mention not just votes, but actions. Those people will go do things in their lives that will change the fabric of, of the world forever. So it's, it's this thing where like the people who hyper fixate on voting, they dement themselves. It's why I don't really care about um, anti-voting lefties at all. I don't think about it. It doesn't matter. You could have all, you could clump together all of the anti-voting lefties and put them all in one place. And you could, and even if every single one of their followers decided not to vote, it would not even shake the needle. You wouldn't even notice it because their, their audiences are distributed across the world. And none of them even have an audience big enough to swing something like a federal election. It's, it's a fixation on a principle that leads to a degradation. And if you want to hear, if you want to know how correct and how on this drum I've been for so long, go back to my 2020 and 2021 uh, content in which I talk about people Specifically in 2020, it was mostly in 2020 that I talked about this on the wind up to the election from February to November. Go see if you can find some of my old VODs. Some of them are still up. Um, unfortunately, some of them are in the lost sphere. But anyway, I used to talk about, some of you will remember this. Windleby probably will remember this. I used to say that the Biden riders and all of this were being cucked by the question is how I used to frame it. Because uh, by obsessing, over voting versus not voting and spending all your time arguing back and forth over whether you should, you personally should vote, whether it's a good thing. You are spending your entire time doing a moral exercise of moral and mental masturbation. In, when you could be using your platform for what it's supposed to, it's like trying to use a screwdriver to hammer in a nail, you know? Uh, Content creators are not vote influencers. None of us, not, not in this space. You could argue that somebody like Taylor Swift, who has fans numbering in the millions, could, could register, could make a change. But the most of us are not, okay? Most of us are small fries and our energies are better put elsewhere instead of going back and forth forever on vote or not vote. It's why I say, I, don't, I think you should vote for the lesser, you know, for the lesser evil. I think it's totally fine to do that. And other than that, I don't care. I don't spend any of my time sitting around freaking out about anti-voting lefties. I don't devote hours of content to being like, look at these stupid lefties, because that's fucking terrible. Why would you waste your platform scolding? It's, it's literally meaningless scolding. No matter how much scolding you do, no matter how much you think about it, it's a, um, it's a trick. It's a mental trick. No matter how much you think about it, the outcome will not change. You cannot change that outcome. So you best put your mind to outcomes you can change. It's like, um, it's like obsessing over who's gonna win the lottery. You know? You don't know. It's a fucking lottery. If you spend all your time and energy thinking about it, worse, if you devote your platform to thinking about that and wasting time around it, you are you are committing a political malfeasance of your own form. The Ukrainian says, to be fair, Demon Mama, while the anti-vote aren't helping and mostly aren't doing anything useful in general, at least not on Twitter, at least this year, as I've said, the election won't li likely be anywhere as close as it was in 2020. But again, I understand why people are worried. I get being worried, but worry alone doesn't necessarily translate into a rational use of a platform. And also, a lot of it is um, just culture war crap. 
It is just chest puffing. It makes you feel good to act like you're right and like you're morally high horse. So you're preaching to the choir and show you, look at how stupid these anti, insert anti or insert pro voting people are. Look at them, they're so stupid, unlike us. And it's just the Spider-Man meme of them pointing at each other, both wasting time and energy on something that doesn't actually matter that much. There are all kinds of discussions around voting and electoralism, whatever, that you can have that are value, but the should you vote is not, you know. Yeah. Hell, even this, even a meta conversation around it is more valuable than the actual conversation itself. Because we're at least talking about something meaningful and... I'm outlining a model by which I think content creators can influence the world in a more effective manner. At least as a strategy value. Crows83 says, this is a good point. I just really worry about it catching on. For a real life example of this screwing people over, Netanyahu's first term way back earlier in his admin in the 90s was won by just a hair, a direct result of the Israeli Arab community boycotting the vote. If I remember correctly, the boycott was in response to a missile strike in Lebanon killing civilians. I don't know enough details about that to say whether that was the main thing that led to it. That sounds like a... Um, that sounds like a, uh, a, a, a strategic miscalculation, but uh, we're not Israel. And uh, yeah, I just don't think that, I, and I just don't think that that's the, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just don't think that's the situation that we're in um, right now. Uh, it, I don't think it's gonna catch on either. And the, re the other thing too, um, is that uh, voter apathy has already caught on. Um, do not vote is one of the most popular positions in the entire country because in America, tons and tons of voters do not have access or involvement or the energy or the time or the belief system to actually vote. There's a ton of people who simply do not vote every year. So that's a bigger problem and r your time would be better spent reaching out to those people in the first place, finding out well, how do we reach the people who are being, who are, who are not, who are completely disenfranchised um, either by law or by circumstance or even by their own choice that aren't voting. They're not disenfranchised if it's by their choice, but they're not voting for whatever reason. How do we reach those people? That would even be a better effort. So that's all I'm saying. I don't think that you, we're at risk of a handful of uh, angry lefties uh, convincing enough people to affect the elections in that way. I just don't think it's the way that it's going to go. And my point is that uh, even if w the amount of time that is given to it, the amount of screen time, the amount of human hours wasted, specifically just arguing the same argument back and forth about whether or not you should vote blue no matter who, is at atrocious to think about. It's a sin. You know, it's like, it makes me go, oh my God, if only you guys had put your energy towards anything else, you know? But yeah. Let's go. Um, there's a lot of stuff that Paul's ego says about voting that I don't a hundred percent agree with. He has a lot. Didn't learn a lesson, I guess. Wow. I didn't know this was going to be, I thought. I guess this was facetious. I guess this is a ponage. Yeah. I didn't know this was a ponage. Brutal. Oh, Brutal. Shit. I have a lot more hope for third parties than I do. I think that most thir third party candidates are <coughs> like, close to being scammers. Like, uh, they're not legally scammers, but in my opinion, they're about as close as you can get without breaking the law. They no, no, I don't You can get a lot closer than that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really could. Um, I... Yeah, I don't really have a lot of... I think you're wrong about maybe David Law. I don't really have a lot of hope for third parties of the existent ones. I do have a lot of hope for the idea of Americans coming together and creating a new third party with an economic uh, justice focus. 
that really yeah, like yeah. pushes the Democrats at the very worst pushes the Democrats like Bernie did to adopt some more left wing positions. Ada Stardust says 51% of voting age citizens went to the polls in 2020, the highest turnout on record. Most people in this slice uh, uh, are not watching internet leftist discourse. Yeah, they're not. They are working on voting day and their job doesn't let them leave to go vote. They are, uh, uh, they don't know when the voting day is because they don't care about politics because they've got their nose to the grindstone or they're just trying to live their life. Um, that's, there's a lot of people who just simply don't vote and there's a lot of reasons for it. Yeah. Um, and imagine if we could find a way to activate even a small percentage of that group, you're not going to get that happening from going back and forth on the internet about voting for Biden, which is not going to happen. Yeah. Like and if the best fucking, actually wins an election, you know, I mean, even if a left wing alternative party came along and started siphoning away like 10 percent of the fucking democrat vote and they had to fucking make adjustments to fucking get those people back right that, that would get, that would be progress 100 percent. it would be a lever that we could put on the process that we currently don't have that's it winning they sell people this message of uh, of of getting onto the debate stage and they mostly use it to sell books and make money and and give themselves a salary for multiple years sometimes a very high salary um so I don't agree with him very much on third parties. And I don't agree with him. Unlike those fucking mainstream, legitimate two-party politicians who don't fucking sell books and make money. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Don't mistake my argument, TJ. They totally do do that. But a third party is supposed to be an answer that's different, right? If it's not different, then it doesn't really matter. Those people are not a scam. Those uh, are legit. Yeah. They're uh, legit. Very yeah, much. yeah, he's misunderstanding completely. He's misunderstanding my point. <laughs> Trust me, I do not approve of the political establishment in America. Fairly strongly. Whatever. On, legit. Uh, on, you know, his approach towards not voting for Biden or whatever. But he did get me on one thing. And I've been thinking about it a bunch. And I, I, I feel like it's important for me to act <laughs> talk about it which is that I think he's right that we've been, that I've been, I don't want to say we, because I don't want to talk for anybody else, but that I have not been hard enough on Biden. And True. I mean, there's, a, there's other things I wish you would have maybe had an epiphany about more. This wouldn't have been the one maybe that, but I, you know, hey, a wins, a wins, a wins, a win, you know? Take him when you get him. Some of that. Uh, he, he said this on the podcast. He said, oh, you know, there's so many lefties, and, you know, maybe it's even... And, and you know, he wasn't super direct towards me, but he did imply that it was me as well. You know, he said there's so many lefties who basically just kind of defend him a lot. And the reality is that um, I don't defend Biden basically at all. But I certainly haven't spent all that much time criticizing him. And most of my criticisms of him have been fairly recently on Israel-Palestine, which <laughs> I, I feel was... We're going to... Here's what we're going to do, all right? Yeah. Uh, Hear me out. I got a plan. We okay. elect Biden. Okay. Okay. Don't... No. Hear me oh, out. shit, really? I'm, 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 I'm with you. Step I mean... one, elect Biden. We elect Biden. Okay. So 4 chess chess, though, right? Listen, so, okay. Once we elect Biden, though, yeah. what we're going to do is we yeah. are going to have a massive campaign to bully Biden as far to the left as we possibly can. Use <sighs> every bit of leverage we can to just bully Biden to the left. But he'll already be in office, so he doesn't need you to vote for him anymore. <sighs> but we're going to do everything in our... Well, see, this is this is another thing. I, I know that... that there's a little bit of crossed wires in that we're talking about other people. I didn't do the bully Biden thing. That wasn't me. Uh, that was other creators in this space. I was never the bully Biden type. In fact, um, my position was basically uh, Bernie blew it. The only real option we've got at this late point in the election is Biden. So we better start thinking about other politics um, 
how we can engage with other forms of politics to make sure that uh, if Biden loses, that will be good. In fact, I spent a lot of my time mostly just talking about trans people and trans issues and trying to educate people on trans issues. Uh, I wasn't really a bully Bidener. Like I may have said it at some point, but it wasn't really my position. So I just, just he's kind of going after the wrong person here, but also, you know, I, I, I don't know if he's only talking about me, but that wasn't really me. Power to bully him for to real. the left. For real this time, right? Yeah. Not, not a meme like it was well, no in 2020. I mean, as far as I know, this is an original strategy that I'm coming up with right here, right gotcha. now. Gotcha. Okay. So I don't. Okay. Know so first, you give him what he. So he. So Biden gets what he needs and what he wants. Yes. And then he. And then in return, he step somehow, one, you give Biden what he wants. Step you give him two, ultimate power. you bully him. Okay. First, right. you empower him to right. the highest office in the land. Then you bully him into doing what you want. It's like in the oh. Watchmen universe when they created Doctor Manhattan and then bullied him into doing whatever they wanted. Right. Amen. Just like that. Just like that was a good reason to, to criticize him. And I think I stand by my criticisms of Joe Biden on Israel-Palestine. I have never said anything even remotely positive, and I've made entire... St I'll say something positive about Joe Biden on Israel-Palestine. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I got a few things I could say. So well, first hold of on, all... Hold on. Well, before you say it, I have okay. a question. Go ahead. Has Demon Mama said Trump would have been worse? Because that's something positive about Joe Biden. Well, no, I mean... Too. That's just saying Trump would be well, – this is different. All right? okay. This is actually positive stuff. So first of all, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but Biden, it said you – know, I have, for the record, said that I do think that Trump would have been – would have done worse on this issue um, than Joe Biden. Um, though it's really – I mean, who knows, right? But I, I do tend to think that um, you know, Trump is very close with Netanyahu. Like, he doesn't even offer, like – he doesn't. He wouldn't even do the Nancy Pelosi. I don't even want to call you Mr. Netanyahu because I don't approve of you. Like he would be like, Benny, so happy. How are the bombs going? Love to see you. Love to see you. Biggest bombs around. Beautiful. Yeah. Sorry. I just. I don't know. I. I just. That. I can't imagine. He loved. He. He got along with. They. They got along well. Netanyahu is like a simp for Trump. It's crazy. Yeah. I have a hard been... I have a hard time believing that Trump would have done any better. But again, that's all just that's mental uh, theory crafting. It's not what happened anyway. So some leaks that candidly behind the scenes, Biden has called Netanyahu an asshole. OK, uh, uh, first of all, oh, right. Yeah, I remember seeing wow. those leaks. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, second of all, and this is even more importantly, um, Biden has actually publicly stated that he is working quietly behind the scenes to oh. try to fucking resolve this stuff. So, I mean, he's, he's I doing something. That. Okay, yeah. so quietly behind the scenes, mm -hmm. he's saying that not who asshole. He's saying he's a he's a, he's a real he's a real asshole, real turd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that's a really good development right there. Yeah. I mean, is he doing any, is he doing anything else, TJ? I mean, like, oh, dropping food. They drop. Yeah. Hey, look, there's hungry people. Oh, Slip my mind. They're dropping food and right he now, drops guys. some food in there. He's like, "Hey, you know, you're you lost your whole family in a bombing. Here's a pop tart." You know? I mean, that's nice though. I mean, they could give them a nice thing. thing. I mean, like, look. I mean, if and they waited months. I mean, for stuff, listen, for Scott, people I mean, to starve to death. Or I know whatever. it sounds kind of silly, but at the end of the day, your entire family's dead, and you get no pop tart, or your entire family's dead, and you get a pop tart. That's like, harm reduction. That's right. harm reduction right there. At least you got a pop tart. True. So come on. Got to give him. Got to give him props for that. So they're going a little. They're they're being a little facetious here. I I do think that the concept of harm reduction is way overused. Um, uh, it's it's misapplied and overused, and I hate hearing it when it comes to voting. When people talk about harm reduction, I think it's like a dumbass conversation. But I don't think I think they're being a little a little uh, bad faith. Not bad faith. That's the wrong word. They're 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 roasting here. They're making jokes. Like I guess maybe I will vote for Biden. Wow. Yeah, I, I think that, um, like, I don't know. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of hyperbole going on. Uh, the fact that B Biden choosing to airdrop food supplies into Palestine is not nothing. It's not nothing. Um, people likely lived because of that. Um and I'm sure those people probably appreciate it, but it is not enough. And it is our position as American lefties to, it's, it, 
we, we have a bit of a responsibility to uh, push him further than that, to say this is not enough. I don't know if I'd go so far as being like, it's a fucking Pop-Tart, but, uh, you know, but yeah. I mean, it says something. It does say something. And this is not me patting Joe Biden on the back, but it is a statement to ignore. Uh, uh, if the, the most frustrating thing is that it proves that Joe Biden could do more. The fact that Israel couldn't do anything when the U.S. decided to airdrop supplies and ignore the Israeli blockade um, just proves that, that Joe Biden could be pushing much harder now that Joe Biden could be making Netanyahu his bitch if he wanted to, and he should be. He should be putting putting Netanyahu in his place. abso fucking lutely I don't know, I don't think I would talk about it the way they're talking about it, but yeah. There is a few things where Biden, I think, did do a little better. And Somebody I'd give that child a Pop-Tart. Somebody just had to break down the Pop-Tart economics of the situation for me, you know? I mean, think it, Paul, you're sitting in a fucking refugee camp. Would you rather be sitting in that camp with no pop tart? What's a pop tart? Absolute pop tart. I mean, and there is a little bit of a. Uh, there is a little bit of, I gotta say. It it does come off pretty fucking bad, to be like sitting in comfort in your streaming studio making jokes about pop tarts about people who are fucking starving. Like, one way or another, that's not. Maybe, maybe, maybe cool that a little bit. Cool that just a little bit. I mean, there you go. I mean, the calculus is there, guys. It may be able to even trade sense. a pop tart for a whole I mean, bunch look, of other stuff, you know? You know what I honestly think will happen? We elect Biden, right? Mm -hmm. And then people are going to see when Biden sucks, people are going to see, they're going to be like, you know what? Things still suck. And because the electorate's really smart, they're going to be like, Oh my God, this shows me that the whole system is the problem and it's not just left or right and stuff. So that's actually going to be an enlightening experience and Trump will be fucking done by then. So, you know, wow. it's all going to work out. So we just got to vote for Biden. That's the only thing we got to do. Wow. And I am we'll so glad that. that everything's going to work out without me having to get off my fat ass and do anything. Mm -hmm. I know that it's beautiful. Well, you got to do one thing. You got to go vote in booth. We've got to get past. Well, the I don't look. have to because I'm in California. Let's be real. Okay. But you know, but other right, people, right, right. we've got to get other past. Other people have got to get off their asses and vote. Yes, go vote, people. Yeah, very important. We get, we get past Trump, and it's utopia. A great detriment to my channel. Um, so I think I did okay on that issue, but I've neglected other issues, and I want to give an example of this immediately. Um, which I have prepared. Man, I really hope this example is, he's totally demented. How am I supporting a demented man having the nuclear codes? It's, that would it's be sort of based. The sort of thing that uh, uh, my real example is more based. It's the sort of thing that I've made mistakes about. And, and, I, and I do feel bad about it because I do spend, I have in many, over the years of my show, and my show has changed a lot. I'm not saying like, I've, I've done a critical disservice or whatever. You know what, dude? I love, I really do. I did love having Demon Mama, but sometimes I feel like she belabors the point a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Demon Mama, please. We this did it. Is... You said... Okay, to be fair, you can't, you can't yell at me for belaboring the point when you've done a 24 minute react to six point six minutes and 51 seconds of my video, you goofs. You can't fucking get at me for belaboring it. And something that you think was wrong. You feel bad about it. You do. This is a tendency that I see in a lot of people. This is another, this is a thing that um, I can say about Kyle's videos too. Like a lot of times I've been watching one of Kyle's videos, I'll watch the first five minutes of it because I'm like, okay, he's just going to reiterate the same point like eight times now. Well, so. I feel like Kyle, when I watch, because I do watch a lot of Kyle, and I do, and I do admit I will stop before the end a lot of times, but, but I feel like with Kyle, it's just like years of experience of tell him, or tell him you're going to tell him, tell him, and then tell him what you told him. Yeah, and uh, it is. Yeah. But I mean, like with Demon Mama, like she's trying to do streams that are literally in, from now until the end of time, so... <laughs> Like her yeah. streams are like ten hours long. And some, shit, I mean, sure. some people just like to they like to take the long way, TJ. Dude, some of these Zoom, it, you know what it is, TJ? We look at it and we go, 
but we're not thinking like she's still got all she's i think in her early 30s right she still got a lot she's got a lot of piss and vinegar right now yeah and another thing is that i feel like a lot of people who are content creators you know try to uh head every possible thing that people could say off at the pass like they're trying to preempt any sort of fucking like pushback and criticism so they feel they like they need to fucking vocalize every possible little insecurity about what they're about to say yeah to like counter any sort of like narratives that might pop up about it before they even get brought up like they're anticipating responses and then trying to like account for them sure. before yeah i i that's what i was talking about in my previous video and i know i have a small tendency to do that but also it's because of the way that like that's a that was a that is a bad habit that i've learned as a result of people being completely fucking deranged about me on the internet for and i mean derangement that uh, uh most content creators can't even fucking imagine the degree to which my statements have been distorted beyond belief uh and misrepresented uh clipped out of context but yeah and i've but in the history of my show, I've spent a lot of time going after Donald Trump. Obviously, I've spent a lot of time criticizing uh, Dems in various ways. But I've never, I, I, I don't feel like I've done a good enough job on this particular issue. And that is on trans <laughs> issues. And that is an issue that is of incredible importance to me. And I feel like I haven't done a good job of criticizing Biden on it. And Paul's critique of me is what made me realize this. So I, I have to give credit to Paul for that. Yes. Sweet revelation. Yep. So, Paul, you did it. Knights in white satin. I don't know why I'm singing that song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we all I know, Paul. The song that came to my head. We all know why, Paul. We all know why. <laughs> Uh, oh, good. But that's a sick song, though. No, I Won't mean, make like, love uh, to you, woman. <laughs> I've <laughs> like, all right. I watched the. No, I'm. I'm just joking. I, I don't want to. I don't want to turn what is a nice uh, relationship with another content creator into a creepy fucking. I don't know, Paul. You know, culture maneuver. Sometimes, okay. sometimes you just not. gotta. Sometimes you just gotta roll those dice. You know, maybe I'm a married man. I'm a married man, TJ, and she's maybe in a committed get... relationship as well. Maybe you get canceled, Multiple. maybe Multiple. you get some fucking nookie. I don't know. Multiple committed relationships. You're going to have to, no no hate to any of you, but you're going to have to work a, a lot harder to win my favor. Sometimes no. you just got to roll those dice, Paul. Roll them. A Consider transitioning. Is good sometimes. That would give you a yeah. huge advantage. You know, you know what I mean? That it will give you, it'll, it'll give you a huge advantage. Estrogen, estrogen gives, gives people a big advantage in my book. Test the waters. You got to test the waters. You got to do. Tainted love. Knights in white satin and tainted love are going on our love making playlist. That's all I know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Don't touch me, please. I cannot stand the way you tease. Uh, I no, love um, you though you hurt me so. This uh, is okay. true. I mean, she's right. Uh, she kind of gives herself shit. I've watched this video. She kind of gives herself shit for like, not like kind of maybe carrying the water for Biden when he really hasn't been an ally to trans people at all. Yes. Like he True. used uh, lip service on the campaign trail, paid lip service to trans people and trans identities and LBGT people in, in general and migrants and immigrants. And he is pretty much snubbed or over every one of those groups in the four-year term he's had mm -hmm. um and yeah i don't hear a lot of lefties especially in our space you know i know that's not all lefties or whatever so i guess not all lefties as a caveat but here on the youtube red tube kind of space or whatever the <sighs> f that we're adjacent to i just uh, really did, didn't hear a whole lot of lefties going like biden's a fucking monster on trans issues biden wants to take hrt and and surgery away from soldiers biden wants to you know biden did, wasn't there for trans people and has done nothing to stop these yep. restrictive bills that are passing at the state level and has not even really spoken on trans issues once or twice even during the entirety of his four-year presidency 
<laughs> except for when he hung a rainbow flag on the fucking White House for a photo op. You know what I mean? That's about as it. a trans. He's not done nothing, but as I've said today and before, um, he's not even come close to stepping up to even meet the derangement that is being directed at trans people by the right, and that's a huge failure. Saying you're going to protect trans people and then basically doing a handful of little things, but nothing in the face of the most ridiculous and overwhelming hyperfixation from the most hateful parts of the right, that's a failure. That's a failure. Trans person, I'm not voting for Biden. So a Trumper, huh? So you uh, know, Trumper. So go ahead and throw your vote away. Yeah. And vote for Donald Trump. You might as well at that point. You, you know what? You're voting for Trump now. You'll be, the first in the, you'll be the first in the gulag, Abby. You will be the first that Donald Trump shows up and snatches you up and puts yep. you in the Time fucking to go. gulag. And uh, we will see you guys if you're patrons, which if you're not, why, you know, you probably should why be. Why aren't you? you yeah, be. listen to Demon Mama it. if you don't listen to us. Go join. Yeah. I mean, we've said it, but we have a vested interest in it. But Demon Mama has also said it, so f can join our Patreon. I mean, I think, the, I think the direct quote was greatest Patreon ever to exist in the history of humanity. Yeah, That sounds about right. That yeah. sounds right. Uh, Here we're taking so, a few words. We will see you guys uh, imminently for sloppy seconds. But, um, sloppy. yeah, this show is done. This show is... Patreon, Blu-ray. Oh, they, they didn't even finish the video. Well, okay, Paul watched it. I, I do feel like um, I do feel like TJ slightly misrepresented my position, but that was fun anyway. Uh, I had a fun time reacting to that reaction, um, and we ended up talking more about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I look forward to talking to them more in the future, um, for sure about various topics, and even I don't know that we'll I don't know that we'll revisit. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we'll end up talking about Biden and stuff. I was never on the bully Biden thing. That was never my my thing. Um, I uh, I said we should criticize Biden. I've always said that, and I acknowledge in this video that like I feel like I didn't do a good enough job. Um, but also, I don't know. It's not been easy to know, you know, exactly what to say. Um, I've been too busy. Most of my time has been devoted to directly fighting with conservatives for the four years of Biden's presidency. Um, I have spent most of it, you know, directly working to improve, you know, my, in my own little way, uh, to, to create content for, to encourage and empower trans people and then also to fight directly against their opponents. I haven't devoted, you know, enough, you know, much time to criticizing Biden. And I do agree that I could have done better, but I've also had other things, you know, to work on. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think they're accelerationists, really. Um, accelerationism has different meanings and a different context. I don't think I don't think any of them are accelerationists. I think they they flirt with a sort of um I think all three of them flirt with a sort of uh what's the right word? Hmm. I don't want to be uncharitable, but like a a sort of uh it all sucks, so fuck it. You know? Um there's a little bit, and, and I'm not saying that's their whole position. That's why I'm saying I think they flirt with that sometimes, where it's just like, oh, you know. Uh, but also, there is a certain truth to that position because no single person or even influencers, creators, whatever you want to call people on the internet, can actually do that much about a vote uh, on the federal level of that size. It's not really, I don't know if I'd say they're doomer, because I don't. I don't think that, I, Paul doesn't, to me, Paul doesn't really come off to me as a doomer, um, really. Um, it's more just like, I think he's like, 
he doesn't trust political institutions. And I can't really I, I can't really argue with that because I don't trust political institutions and I don't think anybody should trust political institutions at all. I think the the political institutions um, largely serve to perpetuate themselves and to consolidate power for a state apparatus that is a power management apparatus. It is a apparatus of control. So I don't know if that's Doomer. I don't think any of them are Doomer. I don't think any of them believe there's no hope. I've met Doomers. I've encountered Doomers and I don't encounter them. I don't, I don't, they don't come off to me as them, but I could, I can understand why people would read it that way. RKI says he doesn't think you should do anything. So then why does he talk? He doesn't say that, but I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to defend Paul here. I, I, there's tons of stuff I disagree with. He doesn't say that you shouldn't do anything. That's not his position. He thinks that, uh, and, and this is my charitable interpretation of Paul's position, and he can correct me if he's wrong, or his fans can correct me if they think that this is wrong. Um, but I think, from what I can get from Paul's position, is that Paul is very strongly pro-union, and he believes that unions and lefties generally should essentially come together to attempt to create a meaningful third party that if not that if if it can't immediately challenge the democratic party can threaten the democratic party to such a degree that it must be listened to um which i think that's like what would largely be considered like a unionist uh p position um, and it's not like a vanguardist position, though there's probably some similarities. You know, vanguardists are kind of like, um, they believe that like a, a communist, a, a group of elite communists, the communist elite, intellectual people must begin the work of crafting a party that can, that can gather a mass movement for, towards a revolution. That's not really his position. His position is closer to like a, an electoral unionist. He believes that unions and everyday lefties should come together to try and form a voting bloc that can threaten the left. Um, so that's, that's my charitable interpretation of his position. I don't think that's a do nothing position. I don't necessarily a hundred percent agree upon it. And part of the reason is that I don't think that the, I don't think that the answer to our future lies in electoral, um, politics. Um, I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it does. I don't think that, um, I don't think we're going, that any of us who are on the left are going to get what we want through, uh, voting in the right guy. We are never going to get a guy who's going to do what we want because to be the guy, there is like an uncountable amount of, of institutional structures that are designed to prevent anybody who believes any of the things that we believe from being the guy. You know what I mean? We can, we can maybe get a guy, we can maybe support a guy who does things more that we like, but isn't that kind of, um, that's kind of avoiding the question, right? That's the liberal position. The liberal position is that you just kind of vote for the right guy forever and the world maybe gets better over and over and over again. But also what if it doesn't, you know? What if the lesser evil is still too evil to save anyone's lives? What if people are still dying and suffering under the lesser evil? And that's where you become a leftist and you go, we got to have a bigger question than this. And I think that for us, um, you know, I don't have the answer, but my personal leaning, my approach is that, um, is that we have to, uh, we have to engage in the process of activating communities of marginalized and unliberated people that we have to together teach ourselves, teach each other how to, the, the process, the material process of liberating ourselves, of finding ways to thrive and strive and live freely, to cover for one another, to watch out for one another, to provide shelter for one another. And the more of us that we are able to actually do this, uh, and connect and teach each other that that the coherency of the nationalist state project will begin to wane. That's my approach.
It's a very different approach. It's a... Uh, I, I think that, elect, that engaging with the electoral system can be beneficial and necessary at certain points, but I am not a party politics person. So that's where our main difference is. Steel Griffin says, as a longtime Paul's Ego fan, I think that's pretty much it, what I was saying. Okay. Blaze Teague says, Bernie nearly slipped through the cracks. Okay, Bernie, Bernie didn't, actually. He, he got further than any of us have seen in our life, but he still didn't make it past Iowa. Like, he, he didn't even make it that close. And he still got filtered. And he's a, he's a sock dem. You know? Um... And he couldn't even get close. Uh, America is the heart of capital, okay? And there are so many institutional barriers uh, that prevent anyone who is not a, not a controllable interest to capitalism, to capital, uh, from ever attaining power. And a lot of people have a sort of fantastical view. A lot of people buy the mythology that anybody can become president. No, anybody cannot become president. Uh, that's not really how it works. You have, there are certain paths that you must take. And once you, the closer you get to that power, there are things that you must accept lest you will never reach that point. So, yeah. Ashmar says, I've been reading some anarchist theory, Rudolf Rocker specifically. I'm not actually super familiar with Rudolf Rocker, but, um, uh, and I have a quote from him. Just as you cannot see with your ears and you cannot hear with your eyes, so too can you, you cannot make the state act in the interest of the working people. It's n the states are not designed to benefit working people. States are a power structure designed to benefit the state. It is a structure of controlling power it cannot almost definitionally this is why the the theory the the statist the leftist position of the dictatorship of the proletariat was a usurpation of the state and then that they would smash it that they would wither it away they would break pieces and wither it away but that that they acknowledge that the state was at odds in, in, intrinsically, definitionally, to the idea of a free working people. That states are, are, are instruments of domination. That's what they are. Anyway, I don't know if I'm going to make that into a segment. I think that was just fun for us to do.